Hey y'all, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. And we are here today with another Marvel Legends mystery box, this time celebrating the release of Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. And we have got an entire box filled with symbiotes. And I hope you guys are excited for this one. You can already see because of the nature that this case is, is clear on the top. You can see that there's just a ton of different Venom figures and symbiote figures. So let's go. Let's crack this thing open and see what we can find inside. So right off the bat, we've we got a bunch. So let's, heck, let's just let's grab one right here. So, all right. So this figure is Toxin. Now, let me go ahead and start this video by saying I do not know every single thing about the symbiotes. I started reading Spider-Man in the early 80s. I have read every issue of Amazing Spider-Man. I've got a fairly encyclopedic knowledge of Spidey history. I have not read every Venom series, every Carnage Maxi series, every spinoff of this. So there's going to be some opportunity for me to make a mistake in here. One of the most common mistakes that I make is I tend to pronounce the word symbiote because that was how I read it when I was a kid. That was what it sounded like in my head instead of symbiote. And there's about a 100% chance that I'm going to screw that up at some point during this video. So, you know, have at it. I have no problem with you guys correcting me and telling me when I get something wrong, when I get a name of something wrong. Man, I'm here to learn just like you are. You know, I, th this is the fun part of this community is the interaction. So when I goof up, don't feel bad. Tell me about it and we'll all learn the right stuff together. But I'm pretty sure this one is named Toxin. This was a Marvel Legends figure. It has got a really, really cool head sculpt. A lot of these symbiotes uh, went through different hosts. Uh, I believe Toxin went through several different hosts, and I think he was more of kind of the anti-hero, you know, good guy that got taken over by a symbiote sort of thing. And so this was the first Toxin figure, and I mean, I can see it. Look at this. Holy cow. You want to talk about absolutely incredible. I mean, every single one of these little, of these tendrils has a sculpted symbiote head coming out of it. And look at the mouth, look at the tongue and the and the detail in the eyes. Everything about this is just bananas cool. Now, it uses the body of the monster venom that I can already see it down in the box. So, we're going to get to it here pretty soon. We may actually pull it up next. But way to go on taking taking a useful frame you know, a useful buck, and then creating a whole new figure out of it, particularly by going all the way with that head sculpt and these accessories. I do have to say, though, it gives me a little bit of a uh, uh, tiny Little Shop of Horrors vibe. You remember the uh, uh, the Venus flytrap that, that was the kind of the bad guy in there? These They sort of look like a bunch of like Tiny little symbiote Venus flytraps in there. If we find Rick Moranis in, like, the mouth of one of these, then we'll know that it was actually a Little Shop of Horrors crossover. So, since we've seen this one, why don't we go ahead and pull out the Monster Venom figure. So, these are on the same frame. And, like, honestly, like, they're heavy. <laughs> like, they, they're actually, like, I'm having a hard time lifting both of these. Now, obviously much calmer as far as the symbiote tendrils and stuff, which is okay because while you do see that with Venom, you certainly don't associate that with Venom the way that you do Carnage or some of the other symbiotes. What you think of with Venom is that jaw and that mouth. Look at the musculature. Look at the striations of that, uh, you know, masseter muscle of his mandible right there. I mean, that is some high level sculpting where, you know, the, the grin has pulled all the way back and he's basically unhinged his jaw to release that massive tongue. Oh, that is so cool. And, you know, I can't say enough about the paint apps. One of the things that I just love about Venom is black and white. You know, few things look better than black and white, particularly when you get this level of detail 
that the the paint looks so good but this one's got that metallic uh sheen to it which i think really helps to enhance the figure i mean great claw hands they're different each one's different he's 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 got good hip articulation and and it allows him to have a nice wide stance because when you've got this type of shoulder and the weight of this figure is kind of all through his chest and shoulders being able to have this wide stance really allows for you to pose it and put it on your shelf but oh man that's really rough that we start with this venom figure and i mean i don't know how we're going to top it i'm sure we will but Good grief, that's a that's a pretty good place to start. So since we've got a ton, let's let's go in a different direction. Let's let's take a look at this. Alright, so this is the space venom, the space agent venom, and I believe this is a build-a-figure. Uh, I don't remember what line or what wave, probably with one of the Guardians of the Galaxy waves, because this is actually Flash Thompson. So Flash Thompson, Peter Parker's one-time uh nemesis later, very, very close friend. Uh, has a military background. He actually, uh, they retconned him and he lost, he was a double amputee. He lost both of his legs, I believe fighting in Afghanistan. Uh, and so then he actually took on the Venom symbiote to uh, help to become Agent Venom. And we hopefully there's an Agent Venom figure somewhere down in this box. But at one point he actually went out into space with the Guardians of the Galaxy and was in this suit and had some, you know, pretty amazing adventures. I mean, you're talking about a football player from Queens who ends up, you know, flying around on spaceships with, you know, a talking raccoon and, you know, two people that have green skin. It's pretty amazing. And a tree. Well, let's not forget that there's also a tree on the spaceship. That's pretty good. Flash Thompson, you did good. And your story in this box is not over because we definitely have some more some more action from you again. Talk to me about something better than black and white. God, look at how good that chest symbol looks and how incredible the paint is. And I really love the uh, the white on the inside of the palms. Look how it makes those fingers really come out and pop. That's a nice design. I'm not sure what comic artist designed this look, but well done, you. That is good. That is good stuff. I'm, I'm going to dig. I'm actually going to pull this one out because I want to tell a little bit of a story about this. So, okay, fingers crossed. This is Riot? Isn't this one Riot? I'm fairly certain this one is Riot. So, uh, during the Venom Lethal Protector storyline, which was uh, kind of one of the early stories that converted Venom from a pure villain into more of an anti-hero uh, the, I think, I can't remember if they were birthed from the Carnage symbiote or if they came from the Venom symbiote, but there were five new symbiotes that were produced in that line. And that book was written by David Michelini and was drawn by the great, great Art Lim, Ron Lim. I don't know who Art is, uh, Rob, Ron Lim. And so this is Riot. There was also Agony, Phage, Lasher, and Scream. I think I'm doing good. Uh, if I'm not, y'all y'all get on me. But this is a Toy Biz figure. And let's see, it is from 1996. 1996. So was it 25 years old at this point? This action figure is 25 years old? At the time, in 1996, Toy Biz's lines were predominantly in the 5-inch scale. So this is obviously way bigger than 5-inch. The the Venom lines, they had two. They had the first Venom line, which this appeared in, and then they had a second uh, line, a second line of action figures that hopefully we'll find something uh, from that. Uh, but they were kind of Toy Biz's first attempts at a deluxe scale, at more of a 6-inch scale, with way more kind of comic accurate, more severe uh, more more intense, more detailed sculpting. At the time, most of the Toy Biz action figure lines were based off of cartoons. The X-Men animated series was still running strong. Spider-Man the animated series was going. And that was really where uh, a lot of our, our figures were coming from. So this was this was the progenitor, kind of the, the basis of what we got in the future. Now, I think we do have to give credit where credit is due. A lot of this, a lot of the inspiration for this type of figures was coming from the things that Todd McFarlane was doing in the Spawn line. So Spawn had begun its 
you know, kind of takeover of what action figures could be, what type of details were expected with sculpting, you know, and, and, uh, had really started, he had begun to change the game. And this was one of Toy Biz's first response to that. But 25 years later, this bad boy still stands up. I mean, that you can put that in any modern Hasbro Marvel Legends display and it will not look out of place. That is, that is pretty impressive. So while we're kind of leaning along those lines, let's look at some of the other uh, figures that were, that appeared uh, as part of that, that group of five. So this is Scream. So I don't know her backstory. I do know that she features prominently in the uh, Universal Studios Spider-Man ride. Like she jumps up on the front of the ride and yells at you and screams and stuff. This was not, so they made one of her in the Toy Biz line 25 years ago, but this is obviously a newer Hasbro figure. And holy cow, I mean, it is, it is pretty great. So you take sort of one of the traditional female bucks, you give her these terrific fingers and then look at this head sculpt with the paint apps, you know, and she's got that great red streak coming all the way through that hair. And look at, look at how there's spikes on the end of each of her, you know, the, the curls of her hair. Ooh, this is good. That is a really, really, really nice character. Nice representation of Scream. Uh, this one is, fingers crossed, this is uh, Lasher, right? I think this one's Lasher. I, I do have the other um, things that go on the back. They're probably down in the bottom of the box. But here you take kind of the, the regular Spidey Buck, uh, actually with the pretty sweet uh, butterfly shoulders. I actually really kind of like that. Um, give it a terrific paint app. I mean, a terrific paint app, and you get another symbiote. Lasher, pretty sure. And then somewhere is Phage. I guess we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Sitting on top, Anti-Venom. And we actually have two versions of Anti-Venom in this box. This is the Marvel Legends version, and this is the Marvel Select version, the one that's slightly, I guess it's seven inch scale, so it's a little bit bigger. This is released directly to comic shops. I, I don't, it, it, the dirty wash, I think I like the, the clear white better than the dirty wash, but it does bring out some of the details of the sculpt, particularly all the muscular striations across the, the chest. It does have those kind of wonky uh, Diamond Select, Marvel Select hips. The big thing, though, is uh, this bad boy will hurt you. It has got some insanely sharp pokes that are coming out, and even, you know, up here on the mouth and the face sculpt and, and down along the chin. I mean, that is that is pretty crazy. And then, of course, here is uh, the, the Marvel Legends version of this. Love the uh, the work that they did inside the mouth to give give it that depth and the way that it, it also sort of brings out brings out the eyes on this. So actually, I just thought of this. I was I was going to mention to you guys if y'all like these videos, if you love these deep dives into Marvel history, if you love these mystery box videos, get, give this video a like and and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Not only do does that help me to know that you guys are actually watching the video. It helps YouTube to know that you're watching the video, and those are the ways that YouTube knows to share this video with other people just like us who love this kind of thing. So if you give me, if you like the video, give it a like, give, give me a comment. That's what allows the community that we're building here to grow, so I really do appreciate that. And Antivenom appreciates that as well. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about the star of the show. It's his week. It is Let There Be Carnage week. And for my money, this is the best Carnage figure that they have ever made. So this was the Marvel Legends Carnage that came with the unbelievable Cletus Cassidy head sculpt. And I gotta say, I do think Woody Harrelson is pretty fantastic as far as casting for that role. You know, he 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 looks like Cletus Cassidy, and he's got the ability to do that wild-eyed stare and grin. I have not seen uh, Venom 2 yet. I mean, I, it just opened last night for, for me. So if you're watching this video in 10 years, that, that's the time frame of this. Um, but I, I, I'm going to probably go watch it. I was not excited about the first Venom movie. Uh, I heard some kind of bad things. And then I heard about 
this line from the movie. The street, like a bird, and the wind. Do you feel me? And when I heard about that, I'm like, wow, that's that's actually the worst line that I have ever heard in any movie ever. And so I kind of, like, we as a family sort of hate-watched Venom. Uh, we, we rented it and, and put it on. And I have to admit, at the end of it, we all kind of liked it. So it wasn't just a turd in the wind. It was actually, it was actually a pretty entertaining movie. But nothing's going to top how great this carnage is. Look at how his hand morphs into this giant, like, symbiote axe. Oh, that's so good. I love these loose tendrils. Those go very, very much with Cletus Cassidy's characterization. I love how huge these fingers are. I think the paint application is really good. That one's hard to top, guys. I know that there was a newer one, like an Absolute Carnage that has the, you know, the swirly thing on it. I actually can't find that one. I don't know what I've done with it, but that's okay because I truly prefer this one better. Hey, we've gone all this way and we haven't talked about Venom. Let's talk about Venom. And let's talk about this Venom, because this is my Venom. This is what Todd McFarlane drew. So Venom first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man 300, maybe with a cameo appearance in 299. This is one of those, like, did Wolverine first appear in Hulk 180 or Hulk 181? Uh, same thing with Venom. But this is the version of Venom that I really think represents the Todd McFarlane era. It, Eric Larson is the one who added the huge gaping tongue. McFarlane is the one who really brought this giant smile. And also from the frame, this is a much more McFarlane size frame. So this, this Eddie Brock Venom is big. I mean, he's clearly bigger than Spider-Man, but he doesn't look like this. Like he's not, he doesn't look like the Hulk. He's still is human proportions just bigger. And so I really, I, this is where my heart is. This this is probably, this is probably my favorite Venom, and this is the one that typically ends up in my display. So very much a classic McFarlane Venom. Another great black and white paint job here. So good. Um, oh, here we go. So here's here's another one of those kind of on that monster uh, mold, but but with a more traditional look. So... This this Venom kind of has the kind of crazy, shocky sort of design. And, and this one is much more traditional, much more traditional spider. Basically, this is the exact same spider that, that Peter wore when, when he was wearing the black suit. But again, you've got that great head sculpt, but just a little bit, a little bit more, more classic, just with that kind of Hulk-sized body. That's, that's good stuff. That is very good stuff. Uh, let's grab this one. Okay. So I, uh, all right, I cheated. I tell y'all all the time, I don't do any homework on these mystery boxes. I just crack open the lid, throw it off, and I start talking about the figures from my knowledge of them. But I saw this one when I, uh, was, was when I went to go find this box, and I'm like, who is that? I actually know nothing about that character. And so I, I cheated. I actually looked this one up. This is Peter Parker. So... This character is called Poison, and he's actually from a race of sort of half symbiotes. They they um they require like a symbiote and a host, or or they have to they have to join with a host who's already got a symbiote in them or something like that. I, so clearly, I didn't read a lot, but this is actually Peter Parker being possessed by one of the Poison symbiote hosts, and. Dude, this thing is cool. I had no idea how awesome looking this figure is. I mean, look at this this swirl coming off the forearms, but the real money is that logo on the chest. Holy cow. All of a sudden, you invert the colors of Spidey's black suit, and then you 3D the logo where the tendrils are actually coming off. That is is phenomenal. I mean, that is just so spectacular. And I'm not sure if this is a completely new sculpt or not. I mean, it almost looks like it has like some Iron Man features, but I don't think that's what this is. I, I, this may be a new sculpt. Certainly, I mean, clearly it's a, a brand new head sculpt for this, but that is just a really stunning action figure. And one, I'm going to have to go back and do a little bit more homework on because I like this. I really like where they headed with this figure. That is, that is great. Lots of black. Let's grab let's grab some more venoms. 
So this is a neat one. So Venom, a little bit different. You can see that he's got the red dot in his eyes and he almost has like a reptilian, reptilian kind of scale around him. And that's because this is Matt Gargan. This is the scorpion. So for a little while in the books, the scorpion, Matt Gargan, was possessed by the Venom symbiote. And look at this. He has got this incredible tail that whips around. So this wasn't in Marvel Legends. This was in the um, Spider-Man Classics line. It actually, 2008. So this would have been during the era where Hasbro was making the figures. But this figure has such a Toy Biz vibe to it. Like, this is the kind of thing that only Toy Biz would make. Only Toy Biz would make a, uh, a, a Venom Scorpion figure. And I wonder, it may well have been sculpted by Toy Biz prior to Hasbro taking over the line. But what a beautiful job that they did. Really nice articulation on the tail. You can get pretty good bend. I mean, it goes all the way, goes all the way straight back, but then does do the curl over the top, and you get 360 spin on it. That's a good figure, guys. If you don't have this one, you might want to hunt this one down because that is a really nice addition to your symbiote collection. Here is the same Venom figure that we saw before, the one that I like, the McFarlane one, but with kind of the transition head. So we haven't gone full crazy loco tongue this is more when Eric Larson took over the book right after Todd McFarlane. So he is the artist who introduced the tongue to things. He had a little bit of that green slime and whatnot. So you can kind of see the evolution of Venom. So McFarlane Venom, Larson Venom, later 90s into the 2000s Venom. And that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that you can actually see how the character's artistic design and look evolved over the years. So, good figure. I like that one, too. Um, oh, yeah, baby. So, this is from the Amazing Spider-Man animated series. And if I can see a date, I mean, it's probably 1995. All right, so this is 26 years old. But, you know, so Venom, this is actually, I think, the second Venom, or the third Venom that they made in the uh, Amazing Spider-Man, or not Amazing Spider-Man, the Spider-Man cartoon, Spider-Man animated series cartoon line. And you know what's coming. You know why this thing is so great. Because it's got the Eddie Brock head underneath. And it has that just very, very animated Eddie Brock flat top going on. It's got this rubbery Venom mask that comes over the top. Oh, yeah. That's so good. That is just so good. What a, and Man, that's the kind of thing that... These were toys. So in 1995 the adult collectible market was virtually non-existent. Uh, you know, I don't think I had even purchased anything off of eBay in 1995. I don't think I bought anything off of eBay until like 98. So this got picked up at Walmart. And, oh, so cool. What a great, great five-inch action figure. I forgot about that one. That was so good. Uh, you are saving for later. Oh, yeah. So here is the first Toy Biz Venom figure. Now, Toy Biz got the license for Marvel Toys in like 1991, 1990, something like that. And Venom was really hot at the time. So he made it into one of their very first lines. And they had to kind of figure some stuff out. You know, look at, you can see this is not the greatest sculpt. It's basically five points of articulation. There's no elbow joint. It does have knee joints, but the hips are just, you know, V hips, just simple shoulders. But they got they didn't have paint on the back, but they got a, a good bulky Venom body. So this is going to be, this would be the first Venom action figure ever, right? That would be it. Cool. Piece of history right there. And then that is going to grow into things like this. So this was, this was in the Spider-Man Classics line, the subset from Marvel Legends that was produced by Toy Biz. I think they kind of hodgepodge this. I don't know why he has these sort of things on here. Again, it's sort of an attempt at maybe an earlier type of head. Toy Biz was, toy, you know you know how you learn stuff? By trying stuff. And Toy Biz was not afraid to try stuff. Look at what they did with these shoulders. Now, I mean, it's hideous. I mean, that, you know, what what's up with that? But it's because of some of these try and fail efforts that they did in these, these Marvel Legends subset lines that we got some of the incredible articulation that came later. So... Big props, Toy Biz. You know I love you. You know I love everything that you did, even when it didn't work. That was good. 
Ooh, I just get so excited. I get so excited when I see these. So I think this was the second Venom in the Marvel Legends, the Marvel Universe line. So before before Spidey the Animated Series, you had you had this. That is right. He has got a lever on his back to give you some tongue flicking action. And what I love about this, it's still fairly limited in articulation. I mean, it still basically has the same articulation as the previous figure that we're looking at, at, at this one. But look at how much better proportioned the sculpt is. I mean, this looks like, you know, an orangutan. Whereas this looks like something to be feared, something to be threatening. You know, great, great paint apps. 26 years old. Flicking tongue action that still works like a charm. Oh, that is good. Oh, that is so good. And there's still more. I mean, there's still more. We've got... Okay, this is, I think, the exact same carnage as the one that I was glowing about a little while ago, but it has the 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 masked head on it. So, again, just a really superior figure. Very, very much. Yeah, I like it because he does have that thinner frame. Carnage is thinner than Venom. He is not meant to be, you know, the big, giant, thick, hulking sort of guy. And so they've got him. He's got a thinner neck. He's got a thinner head. This is very true to particularly that facial, the paint, on that face. I think this is really true to Mark Bagley's original drawings, his original design of Carnage. So good. That is that is very good. This is not. So let's pull out let's pull out some garbage. Garbage Carnage. So this one Oh god. How old is this? Let's see if there's a date. Oh, it says Toy Biz. I can read Toy Biz 2003, I think. So actually that's, you know, not the not the oldest figure when we consider we're pulling out things from the mid 90s. I I think I I'm going to call this one charbroiled carnage cuz he just looks burnt. Like there's there's way too much black and it just looks scalded like he just kind of came through the uh the machine that cooks the whoppers, you know, so he's like flame broiled. Yeah, you know, decent decent head sculpt but but doesn't have that thin look that this one does. Like, look at look at the difference. Just, I mean, you know, this is why we get new figures. This is why Hasbro is killing it, is because they are taking something that, man, in, in 2003, this was a pretty daggone good figure. Even if it, you know, was a little bit crispy, it's still a good figure, but now we're getting even better figures. And, you know, here's another version, another Toy Biz Carnage version. They like to stick Carnage, you know, as an accessory character in that Spider-Man Classics line. This one just kind of doesn't have enough of the... I mean, this almost looks like Deadpool's skin. See how it's like it's like like pockmarked or eaten away? I've always thought that, you know, Carnage looks more like he's got these... You know, they're, they're like stripes almost. They're like... Li they feel like they're moving, right? That those, those, those stripes and things are like moving around. This is like they've eaten holes out of his skin. Eh, not my favorite. Not my favorite. We got a more silver-painted version of Venom, in case you're, you know, heading out for the dance floor. Got that one. Here's another... Oh, that's nice, actually. Look at that. That's a good head sculpt. Uh, another, you know, so here's an example of, yep, we love ball-jointed shoulders, but hadn't quite figured out how to get the hips yet. So he has a good wide stance. That'll be be good for, for posing and display. Decent, decent kind of variation so that he's not just straight black he kind of you know fades in and out of the blue black and a good you know tongue popping out there but you know we got better oh wait there he is okay all right phage right lasher riot agony scream phage this one's phage i think man i hope i'm right if i'm not just tell me it's okay uh again rob Lim designed uh david michelini written Fairly new figure, really nice. Cool paint, got lots of spiky things. Really cool spiky hand created there. That's pretty nice, I like that. And this is the third version of that same figure that I love so much. So here's the Eddie Brock headed version of Venom. And look at how much it still looks like that Toy Biz Eddie Brock head that we saw back in 1995. I mean, it's pretty remarkable that you still, you know, that that facial sculpt with that kind of crew cut haircut still makes it 
and, and still works as well as it did back then. Uh, this is a Diamond Select. So it comes with uh, this, this multi-headed kind of thing. So they made a figure like this in that second um, line of figures, the, the, the Toy Biz second line of figures that I was describing earlier that were the more deluxe figures that had all the different Venom heads on top of it. Unfortunately, I'm missing the main head, and I don't know where it is, but and a hand. So this is kind of just a, a part of Venom. Here's another Venom, another Toy Biz Venom, more of the, the hulking, monstrous version. And now we're going to get into some, some really kind of special figures. And let's, let's just grab the first one. Oh, wait, before we do, I have a second one of these. I don't know why. All right. Here is Peter Parker. So this is from Amazing Spider-Man issue 800, which was the penultimate issue of Dan Slott's like 15 year run on Amazing Spider-Man. And in that issue, he battled the Red Goblin, who was Green Goblin possessed by the Carnage symbiote. And so in order to fight a symbiote, Spidey had to take on a symbiote. So here is Spidey back with the Venom symbiote. And if you can see it, the eyes actually come out. They, they actually kind of flare out from the mask a little bit. It's a cool look. It's actually a really, really cool effect. And you have a, a different version of the Spidey on his chest. I mean, still looks, still looks like back, Black Suit Spidey, but updated, just a little bit different. And so this was, this look was how he took on, we'll leave him right there, the Red Goblin. And so here is Norman Osborn possessed or I guess not necessarily possessed, more like kind of co-opting and taking over the Carnage symbiote. So again, this is a figure from Amazing Spider-Man 800. There is a third figure that came from that single comic, the uh, Agent Anti-Venom, where Flash is uh, wearing a white Anti-Venom you know, suit in his, in his agent stuff. We'll see Agent Venom in a second. Uh, I don't know where that one is. I got to find that one. But this is the Red Goblin figure. And Hoo, 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 man, oh man, that is a really, really cool head sculpt. I love this thick, thick tail that he has. He has, of course, the carnage sort of tendrils popping out. Uh, very, very true to the art. I want to say it was Stuart Immerman that did the art on that issue, but that was, you know, issue 801 was Dan Slott's swan song that was uh, drawn by the incomparable Marcus Martin, but really kind of the big finale of his run was issue 800. So it's cool that we've gotten two figures, really three, from that singular comic book. Now, the other thing that Dan Slott did that was really maybe the most brilliant and my favorite part of his run, not Spider-Verse, not Brand New Day, none of that, it was the superior Spider-Man story. So if you're not familiar, Dr. Otto Octavius switched bodies, pulled a little Freaky Friday with Peter Parker and took over Peter's body and went on to become the superior Spider-Man. That title was so good. There was so, he, Slot played that for all it's worth. He took all of Doc Ock's idiosyncrasies, both good and bad, and then morphed them into a world in Peter Parker's body. It just was great. And so at some point in that storyline, I believe Superior Spider-Man was trying to heal Flash Thompson from his double amputation, uh, the Venom symbiote took over Superior Spider-Man. And so this is Doc Ock in Peter's body with the Venom symbiote. Got it? Everybody got it? Good. All right. Really, really nice action figure. Look at how incredible that paint job is. One of the things you might remember from Superior Spider-Man was that the web lines were always kind of haphazard. You know, I think Ryan Stegman may have been one of the first ones to draw it that way. Uh, but they managed to capture this. You know, he doesn't have the very neat patterned Ditko Ramita web lines. They, they're they kind of random. Look how they're, look at how they're not all the same size and shape. Very, very nice. Love that black and white with the fangs, the teeth going on there. Nice, nice figure. A little, little splash of red, you know, on the sides. I know I've got the the tendrils for him somewhere too. You can see there's some tendrils down at the bottom, but superior, superior venom. Here's Flash. So this is the the actual Agent Venom figure, and I love it. 
I mean, it's just it's just so cool and gave Flash Thompson a chance to be a real hero. So very, very cool. So this was the exact same sculpt that they used on the Agent Anti-Venom, which basically just reverses the color scheme of that. But really cool Flash. This is, I think, Mafex. So this is the Mafex Venom, and it's a beautiful figure. I mean, a beautiful sculpt, terrific functional articulation, but it just mm, falls apart. But it's not to scale. It's too small. Like, even when you put it up against the Mafex Spider-Man, it's just too small, which is a crying shame because, it, it, I mean, it's, it's virtually perfect in every other way. So I do really, I do really, truly, truly love this figure. I just wish that it was a little bit bigger, bigger and fit in more. So we saved the best, <clears throat> saved the best for last. Without a doubt, I think this is the finest Venom figure that's ever been made. <coughs> Excuse me. This is in the very first line of Spider-Man classics. It's Venom, obviously. You know, there's, there's Venom on his back. But this is a mid-transformation Eddie Brock Venom. Holy cow. Keep in mind, up to this point, they're making animated figures. They're making figures that look like the cartoon that came out in 1995. And then they bust out with this. With Eddie Brock's face fully painted, fully sculpted, while being engulfed by the Venom symbiote. Oh, look at the teeth. Look at the inside of the mouth. They actually sculpted and carved out the inside of the mouth and the tongue coming together around his maniacal grin as he becomes engulfed by, by the Venom symbiote. You know, you've got the, the black creeping down the leg. You know, it's like in parts, not in parts. The tendrils are poking out. I mean, this, this figure in just a static pose is in motion. I mean, this is this is the height of action figure sculpting, and this we're talking two thousand, right? I think that's what it's going to say on here. Let's see, two thousand and one. So I was close, two thousand one. So it's only twenty years old. But look again, look at how incredible this Venom figure is. I, you know, yeah, it's got ball shoulders. It's got kind of funky sort of ball hips. It doesn't have quite the articulation that some of that we've come to expect here lately but it most definitely delivers when it comes to sculpt. This thing is a true work of art and really my all-time favorite Venom figure that's ever been made. So thank you guys. I appreciate y'all watching the video. I've got a few more things to say. If you like this video, you're absolutely going to love this video and the rest of my mystery boxes. Do not be afraid to check those out and click on those. Please, if, you, if you're so inclined, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we love having more and more friends come on board. I love it when you guys give me comments. I really like it when you give me likes. Again, that's what tells YouTube to let other people know that this might be a video that they're interested in watching. And so, you know, other, other friends, we can continue to, to grow this together. But I hope you guys go out and enjoy Let There Be Carnage. And uh, I will see you next time on Carbon Scoring.